Hey y'all, we're Tanya and Dave from Let's Turn It Up World. And for those of you that are new here, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss an adventure or an update. And yes, we are camping in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I guess we're snowbirds that actually don't fly away in the winter. Yeah, we're real snowbirds. We don't run away from it. We embrace it. <laughs> Now, we have been full-time RV living for over a year now. No, that's right. We've met a lot of uh, full-time RVers, both in RV life and van life, that actually are pulling away from full-time RV life. Yeah, they're quitting, you guys. So today, we're not only going to tell you about why RVers are quitting full-time RV life, we're going to show you why you might want to reconsider full-time RV living. Right now, let's kick this off. So we are here at Fletcher View Campground and this is Bob. He has been the campground host here for six years. And over the last year, there's been such an, a substantial increase in folks trying to camp here. You can't get a spot, but I'm gonna let him tell you about that. <laughs> Already, I'm gonna say it all in a nutshell. Basically in the summertime when it's 110 down in the valley, people wanna live here. Uh, so most of the people max out the 14 days. Uh, the first come first serves, of course, the most you can stay is the 14 days. A lot of our reservations come in, they can only get it for one day, but they want to stay longer. So what do they do? Is there an opening on a first come first serve? If there is, they grab it and they max out the 14 days. People want to camp here so bad, next door in the picnic area, that becomes a campground too in the summertime. People want to camp here so bad as they camp there, every morning there's a little group that comes walking over asking who's leaving today, who's leaving today. Who's leaving today? And if anybody's leaving today, that spot is taken very quickly. So if you're a first come person driving up the mountain that day, you're basically gonna be out of luck. So, so Bob, <laughs> who's leaving today? Nobody right now. I know I know two people that are leaving tomorrow, but okay. Uh, one is behind the camera at this moment. <laughs> but if they want, they can stay. I think they have 12 more days they can do yeah. it before they max it out. Yeah. And just another side note too, if you want to camp here and you have a good size rig and you're doing a first come first serve, leave the rig at home, particularly if you live in the valley. Leave the rig at home, come up in your smaller vehicle, your truck, your car, whatever. Get the site, go home and get the rig. Sites have to be occupied the night, the first night that you camp here, ah. okay? And also, if you're pulling a 40-footer and you drive up the hill here and you see that our campground sign is full, don't pull in. We get a lot of people, they don't read signs. So we get 40-footers that pull in here. We might be guilty of that. Not 40-footer, <laughs> though. 40 footer, <laughs> yes, but 40-footers <laughs> become an issue to get out of here. And wow. that's just a special note is please read the signage when you come up. And that that's saves... not just here, that's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> that saves a lot of problems, headaches, and misunderstandings. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Alrighty. Time to go warm up by the fire. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so just one last point. Now, this is the winter months as well. And we're here right now. We fortunately got a spot, but you can see right over here, you guys. Campground full. So already the campground is pretty booked right now and it becomes a waiting game like Bob was saying. So behind us is actually campsite seven here. It's, one, it's our favorite campsite here in the winter because it gets a lot of morning sun, which is really nice in the morning. What's Tanya doing back there? <laughs> nothing, nothing, but, nothing. But we got here to this campground about four days ago, and this site was completely reserved the whole time. And the whole time we've been here, no one's been here. Empty. It's been empty Our the whole time. Spot, empty four days. We could have been right, right here. You know, so that's that's kind of frustrating a little bit. Yeah. So if you're gonna make a reservation hold to it or go online and try and cancel it so that we can get our favorite spot just saying <laughs> exactly
Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs>Overnight camping costs at many RV resorts across the country have increased substantially. And that's actually true here at this RV resort outside Las Vegas, even for monthlies. Monthly rates have increased up to 30% across the board for campsites at this RV resort. And inflation has also impacted national park entrance fees. For example, outside Las Vegas at Red Rock Canyon, fees are going up 33% in January 1st from $15 to $20 per passenger vehicle. And when fees go up, it's kind of like taxes. They probably aren't coming down in the near future. So unfortunately, they're probably here to stay. So you need to budget it. Um, Absolutely, because you know, things probably won't change for the better in the near yeah. foreseeable future. So not only have the RV campground prices increased substantially, it's really hard to even find a spot in many of these. I'm talking daily and even monthly, which you can actually save some money in. This one in particular, this campground called the Oasis, we have been trying to call for monthly spots for several weeks now. And every day we've called the same answer. There are no spots available. You know what? Let's give it a try right now. Oasis Las Vegas RV Resort. How may I address your call? Hi, yes. I'm trying to inquire if you guys have monthly spots available. No, there's absolutely no uh, monthly spots available at all right now. Wow. Do you see any in maybe the next week or two coming up? Or should we just keep trying? No, there's, um, right now we have a bunch of problems. People, uh, well, because people want that are here already want to stay longer and they can't because there's no space. And um, so we really, really, I know we don't. I have like eight people, ten people wow. in my book that are desperate. Okay. So, and there's nothing right now. We just had another lady on traveling nurse. She needs it, and we don't have it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, okay. You can still call, though, because it could change. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, I mean, see, you can't get a spot and you don't see any in the near foreseeable future, but you can see why this is a hot RV resort to come to. Look at that pool. Many, if not most RVers still use propane for heat, hot water, and cooking. And we do as well. Now we just spent a week in the mountains in the snow and the cold, and we used a lot of propane. So we're getting a bit low. We're gonna go see if we can fill this up right now and let you know what it's gonna cost us. Well, we're in luck, they have propane today. We've been here a few times before where actually they had run out of propane. And we've found that in a number of locations across the country that some places like some RV parks didn't have propane. But today, we're in luck, we're getting filled up. So a really quick tip while Dave is putting the propane tanks back into the RV is make sure you have a propane monitoring system. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have one of those so you know the levels of your propane before you head off on a trip, during and after. And we tend to use what is called the Mopeka monitoring system. So it's worked flawlessly for us thus far. We have an actual monitoring device inside the RV and we both have the apps installed on our phone. So it's just a really important tip to have. And if you're curious about what we use, there's a link in the description box below. All right, so we're back in business. Now it costs us $3.99 a gallon to get our propane filled up, which is still pretty darn expensive. Now it was more expensive, you know, about three to six months ago, but boy, that's still expensive. And same thing's true with gasoline and diesel. And that's actually causing a lot of full-time RVers to quit or at least stop really traveling around the country. If you travel any bit, you're gonna really pay higher prices for gasoline and diesel. And you're gonna see that in your budget. We actually did a video, which you can see right here of all of our RV living costs over the past year. And you'll see in that video, we talk a lot about gasoline prices and the impact it had on our budget. Hey babe, the propane's all set. Oh, that's awesome. Well, it looks like we are getting pretty low on groceries, so I think we need to make a grocery store stop. Now, obviously the prices are gonna vary from state to state at the grocery stores, but the higher grocery prices are across the board. And it's certainly another factor that's affecting all of us here in the RV space. Oh. 
So each and every one of us has been to the grocery store lately and we're all infected by the through the roof prices we're finding at these grocery stores. It definitely has an impact on a lot of us in the RV space and it can go even further impacting those with a smaller RV because they can't buy things in bulk because we don't have a place to store them. So this is a prime example. A lot of us love our eggs. This has doubled in price from what it used to be for just a dozen eggs. And so it makes it even harder to want to buy them because I love them so much, but it's double the price. Mm. If you're a full-time RVer and you're thinking about quitting full-time RV life, please let us know in the comments below what factors are influencing your decision. Absolutely. Hey, and if you're also thinking about getting into the RV space or thought about it, what might be preventing you from doing so? Leave that in the comments below. But at the end of the day, one of the things we really do enjoy is the RV life. Yes, you might have to make some adjustments. You might have to make some changes to really enjoy this life. But I will tell you, it's one of the greatest ways to see this country. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, off to the next adventure. Let's go, babe. Let's rock.